check it out. Real work is going to be done here. Hi, my name is Doug for the Full Earth Workshop. Today, more cutting edge work, literally, on the 1931 Alfa Romeo. We're building this thing to really represent the original prototype. Today, we're going to be working on the first of a two-part series. How do you make the instrument panel from scratch? And we're going to start this detailed job by using the proper tools. I purchased from eBay one of these things, a 14-piece disc cutter. Now, to be able to do our instrument panel correctly, we've got to take this thing apart a bit because you'll see it's not quite perfect for what we're trying to do. Now, get prepared to get a little bit messy because all this stuff is packed in grease as it comes from China. And you'll see you'll need to wipe down every single part or you're going to end up getting it on some of your work. Now, you've seen previously, I keep a lot of photographs on what the Alpha 8C actually looked like. And there are a few prototypes that still remain. You'll see on the desktop here a couple of examples of instrument panels. The plastic one I'm holding, well, that is from the poker kit. Now, this one was made previously by me. It has motor turning. We're going to do that on this new version. What I found out is the positioning of the instruments was incorrect on the original model. So I'm going to do this by creating a brand new instrument panel from scratch. The color decals that you just saw, those are from model motor cars. I've used a few of those on the model so far. I want to show an entire cluster of Yager instruments, so I made my own graphics for those using Illustrator. I'll be upgrading the instruments that I did previously, and you'll see that I've used hands on each one of them by taking old antique pocket watches and removing the second hand. This very cool fuel pump handle was a model motor car's part, and we're going to be installing that toward the end of today's episode. Here's a lever control that I created just from scrap parts, and this will fit on the right side of the instrument panel and will be operational. My first part to hold the steering column in place was not accurate, so I'll be redoing that. And the choke that comes through the instrument panel will also be operational, and this is the escutcheon. Whenever you're trying to super detail a poker kit, it's very important to get as many illustrations, detailed drawings, and photographs that you can find because there are no instructions past a certain point. And photographs are where I'm getting the information to make today's control panel. As you see, the second and third from the left, those instruments are incorrectly placed. So we have to flip-flop those in the upcoming one. I'm going to start by making a template, as I always do, and we're going to have to adjust not only the shape of this, but we're going to have to adjust the way those instruments fit into place. We're just going to flip-flop them. Here are the two that are incorrect, and I'm going to use the original poker part just to flip-flop the whole spacing for those instruments. Here's the approximate location of the escutcheon and the lever on the right side of the control panel. And now with the bow, this was the way that everything is assembled. On this bow, we're going to check and make sure that we're very close with the shaping of this control panel. Since I'm retrofitting this new part, we're going to have to kind of adjust both the bow and the instrument panel profile so everything fits perfectly once we get it done. That's fine, though, because we do have a little bit of tolerance between the outer body and the control panel itself. I'm using some aluminum sheet that's just under a millimeter thick. We do need it to be a little bit thicker to give you a real proportion of this dash. When you go to cut this gauge of aluminum, you can kind of choose the tools that work best for you. The tin snips actually were not the best, so I just backed off and took some old cast iron kitchen shears, which seemed to work a little bit better. You'll notice when you're doing these inside cuts, that's the trickiest part. Main idea is just try to keep the aluminum as flat as possible. If you get slight bends in it, you can always go back and fix. But the real big bends are going to be difficult to get the whole sheet flattened out again. <laughs> it's okay if you work slowly. Just make sure that you try to get it as accurate as you can. Then go back at it with a rotary tool and possibly some sandpaper. You want to try to get this thing looking as smooth as you can at this point. All right, smoothification is complete. Now, now we got to go and see where we are. We're pretty close on shape here, so I think we're okay. Let's jump in and start putting holes in this thing. 
So again, I'm going back and I'm using as a template the original Poe Kerr kit, checking it against the illustration and photograph. And now we're going to have to make some adaptions here in this tool. Why? Well, look here. See, when you go to cut in the holes, these two bolts are in the way. And when we remove them, we get an extra surprise. It still doesn't want to come apart because what they've done is they've pinned it from the back. That's okay. We'll just take a bigger hammer and a bigger screwdriver and pry this thing apart. I'm not really sure why they stuck this thing together so well, but uh, we're going to overthink it and overwork it and overpower it. Oh, avert your eyes. It's not so pretty anymore. <laughs> Look, grease underneath as well. That's okay. We're going to make these parts in a different configuration. You're going to have to turn one upside down and this one upside down as well and try to match up these holes. Now to do that, since we don't have the screws there, we're going to use the other punches and put them strategically in place. This thing's all aligned so we can still use it. You're going to have to take your blank now, put it up through the hole and kind of spy through the top. Yeah, I think we've got it pretty much aligned. Do a Lizzie Borden, 40 wax. Yeah. All right, now if all is well with the world, we'll have a nice little blank cut out, and we do. Nice. So the first one was successful. Let's show you one more. Since we've removed all the guides from this tool, very, very important that you put the individual punches in there. There you go. See us lining it up right in the center, and then uh, go at it. That alignment is very important, or you're going to ruin your workpiece. And we're clear. Now pull out all the pins and we should have a perfectly placed hole. <laughs> it's a little tricky getting it undone. Use your other pins to just knock out that part. Well, let's see the result now and I don't think it's going to be half bad. Very nice. Yeah. Make sure though, when you're doing this, remember you only got one shot at it. So you got to be very certain that your pins are in the proper spots and that your location is right in the center of that punch. Oh, another important thing about it too, you have to have familial support because if you start hammering on this thing a little bit too late at night, it's not gonna go well. You know, after watching this, I, I really hope I didn't do any marring of the desk underneath. I do hope that that cutting board is thick enough to absorb all of that pressure. Okay, that's three holes in a row. That should be uh, good for you to be able to start your own project there. Uh, now let's put this thing back together and hope that maybe someday we'll be able to do this again with this part. They are kind of expensive, you know, like around 30 bucks or so. I'm going to use some double-sided tape at this point because we have to get everything aligned. I've got to put the original holes for the screws back in and also be able to tap it then afterwards. So I'm trying to use one of my mini drills that is just slightly smaller than the tap that I'm putting in. Luckily, this modeling aluminum from k and Metals tends to be very soft, so using the tap is a pretty painless affair. You know, ever since I started this model a few years ago, I've really found myself increasingly liking working in metals, especially more than styrene because it is so much quicker to get to the end result because you don't have to wait for any glues to dry. Also, metals like aluminum and brass tend to be so malleable, you can really bend them quite a bit and not worry about them breaking right away uh, the way styrene would. So I really encourage you guys that have been working in plastics, uh, really try this out. You'll be really amazed at how you can even include metal work into your plastic projects. We're working on the slot here for the lever that's on the far right side of the instrument panel. We've smoothed it out and now we're going to work on the little screws, tapping this little area to be able to fit that mechanism into place. A reminder, this is the first of two episodes that will cover all aspects of making this instrument panel. We're going to take it all the way to doing some machine turning. We're going to be able to do that with a rotary tool and a brush. So you'll have to watch to see how that's done. And we're also going to work on those instruments, putting new faces into the back. We're going to put hands on, and then we're going to put some form of glass. Haven't exactly decided how we're going to do that yet, but we'll figure it out. We'll have fun, and it will be really cool.
And just to remind you that we have things really easy these days with machines, uh, let's put in that fuel pump handle. Can you imagine? Back in the day, you had to adjust your spark, you had to adjust your pumps, you had to adjust the choke. All this stuff is done for us today. We could even watch how-to videos on how to make a 1-8 scale Alfa Romeo from scratch. Hey, support us. Like and subscribe and tune in again for episode number five. Coming next on the Full Earth Workshop.